we've chosen to use as an example is a wrist immobilization orthosis. And we're going to be starting off with pattern creation. Um, prior to that, I just want to go over some of the indications for using this orthosis. Most commonly, we use it for patients who have had a wrist fracture or perhaps they have carpal tunnel syndrome or some type of a wrist injury such as a sprain. Um, the position of the wrist in the orthosis is very dependent on that diagnosis and hopefully the prescription that you receive from your physician will help you in guiding that position. So in this book we do use a pattern making approach. So in order to make a pattern you need to use a paper towel and you're going to have your patient lay their hand flat down on the paper towel. Um, in some cases you want to use the other side so if they've had an injury and they're not able to put their hand on the table like this you can use their non-injured side to create the pattern. Um, so just make sure you have a paper towel that's long enough to include the form and the hand within the design. Um, what we're going to do first is again lay that hand down and usually the hand is going to rest in just slight ulnar deviation which is normal for them. To get yourself oriented, just draw out the whole hand. Okay, we want to be sure to include two thirds the length of the form, so I'm just going to mark up the arm here. Distally in the hand, we want the orthosis to end just at the distal palmar crease to allow full MCP range of motion. So I'm going to mark for the second and the fifth MCP. And then I also, in, in addition to the two-thirds the length of the form, I want to include about two-thirds the circumference of the arm as well. So to do that, one small trick is to do what's called a 45-degree angle trick. So you take your pen and lay it at a 45-degree angle from the form. And this will work all the way up to the wrist area, just like this. And then if I lift the paper towel up, you can see I'm able to obtain that two-thirds the circumference of the form. Um, to obtain where you're going to put the distal hole for the thumb, what I'm going to do is mark for the MP joint of the thumb and the IP joint of the thumb. Okay, you can lift right up. The distal palmar crease, I'm just going to connect those two areas. I'm going to come out on the ulnar side a little bit just to be able to have some troughing on the ulnar side of the hand and then connect it down proximally. On the radial side, this is the tricky part, I'm just going to round out on the radial side going in between the IP and the MP joint and then connect down to that radial side. You never want to have any sharp angles on your, on your orthosis pattern so what we're going to do is just smoothly bring that down and again about two-thirds the length of the form. Um, the placement of the thumb hole can also be a little bit tricky so look at the patient's hand and if you get a sense for the width of that web space so that would be from the MP joint of the thumb up to the distal palmar crease and generally that's about a thumb's distance or so. So when you look at your pattern what you want to do is bring it down about a thumb from the distal border and the same on the radial side and that should be where your oblong shaped hole is going to start. And we're going to bring that longitudinally you never want to make this rounded, you want to make it oblong so that it sits well on the thinner area. If you make it rounded, what happens is it gets, tends to get caught at the MP joint level.